We look today is Friday, March 1st. The stocks are ripping. S&P's up 1%, NASDAQ up 1.5%. Dell's up 30% after earnings. That's got the tech sector ripping again, led by semis and the usual names, NVIDIA and the like. Now, the question turns to, is this a bubble? And for that, we look at some data presented by the S&P Global uh, around the ideas of correlation, dispersion, and volatility. Now, before your eyes glaze over and you fall asleep on us, this stuff is really helpful to assess the situation. Are we in a bubble? And there's some evidence that we are. And we want to talk about some signs or some signals that suggest uh, when that could pivot or when that could turn. So first, let's break up this chart. You have three uh, lines on here. You have dispersion in blue, volatility, gold, and the correlation at the bottom. And then you got the S&P 500 in the left and mid caps on the right. Okay, what is dispersion? Dispersion tells us how much individual components are moving in an index. So the more things are moving, the more dispersion you have. So if you think about NVIDIA is going just crazy, AMD is going crazy, Coca-Cola maybe not doing much, that's telling us that there's a lot of internal movement of those index components. I'm going to jump down to correlation next. Correlation tells us essentially, are things moving basically in unison, right? Are, are all the components going up or are they going down? And when you have low correlation, that tells us that a lot of things are moving up, not everything. If you compare this to the period of the COVID crash, 2020, all stocks went down, right? Everything crashed. That's why correlation went up. Nothing was saved from that. Now, dispersion also went up because certain names crashed more, like cruise lines, their business was gone. Energy went to zero, right? But if you were like a hospital stock or whatever, maybe held up okay. And so dispersion increased because the, the individual components will be moving down more, but the high correlation tells us that everything was moving down. Now, embedded with this is the idea of volatility. Volatility is just the index volatility. And so obviously COVID crash, vol, index vol goes nuts. And what's curious about this is that today we see dispersion near record highs, particularly in the mid caps, as you can see on the right. Um, but, you know, really volatility is pretty flat, uh, up maybe slightly, but, you know, look, this is not a signal of the market crashing. Um, we have dispersion increasing, which is more to this idea of stocks are going up, specific stocks are going up, while vol is kind of creeping up, right? And, and, um, and that has some, uh, some ramifications. So let's jump ahead a couple of slides here to uh, this data from the S&P Global again. And they highlight some really interesting stuff here. Um, this is the period from 1996 to 2013, and we highlighted this area in red because uh, this was the internet bubble, right? And if we look at the S&P 500 chart from back then, you could see that, you know, late 98 into 99 market rips. It just goes crazy, 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 crazy. Uh, and then right here in late Q3, it fell apart. And just to put this into context, you know, if you look at from essentially the start of 98 to, or excuse me, the start of 99 up to where we were in September of 2000, that was a 38% rally. Uh, and then obviously that fell apart rather violently. And so when we flip back to this, uh, chart here, excuse me, of the S&P 500 and this dispersion index, you can see the dispersion jumped in December or kind of early 2000, and then it stayed elevated, right? And this is the idea that a bubble can persist, and it actually didn't revert until the start of 2021. So during this time, volatility, which is in green here, stayed pretty flat. Volatility didn't increase. So why does this matter? Let's read about what the S&P has to say about this. The period between April 1999 and January 2001 showed, us a, showed a marked increase in dispersion driven by the deeply idiosyncratic behavior of the technology sector. But index volatility did not rise as sectors other than technology performed more normally. Thus, dispersion can better capture period, periods where only a portion of the market either bubbles or crashes. Said another way, dispersion's going up but volatility, index volatility is not doing anything. And in this case, obviously it was the tech sector that was, le you know, that, that was volatile, it was just stocks up market, uh, excuse me, uh, stocks up vol up. That sounds exactly like what's happening now, obviously. And so, you know, this is obviously, you know, you say, look, AI revolution, semi stock revolution, you know, I'm not a macro guy, maybe that's right, but I can tell you that this data is anomalous and it's hard for this to persist. Right? It's hard for the market to get kind of this pulled apart. Uh, now, we have an election this year, and you know these bubbles, as I said before, can last for a while. So what are some triggers that you could look for that the uh, 
bubble may be bursting, so to speak. For that, we're going to look at SKU. This is an example. This is the SMH. This is a semi ETF. Um, this is the current SKU in green. And what you can see here is that call implied volatility. So this is the 110% strike. So 10% above where we're trading right now. That implied vol for that option is higher than where the at the money option is. This is unusual for a big ETF um, like this or, you know, something like the spiders, et cetera. So this is unusual. Obviously, you have. AMD, NVIDIA, et cetera, the big components of this are really pushing higher and that's making this uh, skew pop. Now you compare that to the downside, it's also unusual to have the 10% downside put have a lower implied vol than the call. So what this tells us is that people are buying calls, they're selling puts or there's just no demand for puts. And so there's this skew that looks kind of like a ramp here, right? That's unusual. If you look back before how sparked this market rally that occurred really at the start of November and hasn't looked back. If you look back at October, so this is before the pet Fed pivot and the big market rally started, just a more normal environment, uh, you can see that the upside call had a lower implied volatility than the put, right? And so the signal of a possible bubble bursting or things shifting is going to be skew rotating back towards this October look, right? Where puts get a bid, calls come off, uh, calls coming off could be a, a, either demand coming down or people selling calls. And that's going to be the signal that this momentum that we have right now uh, could die out. And we think that this could really also occur around big options expiration periods. So, you know, March, we have a bunch of options expiring. We have the big VIX expiration uh, as well. There's some CPI ratings. So that, that's one date to pay attention to. Obviously, with the uh, election coming up, you know, that September timeframe is the other big one that you want to uh, flag on your counter. So if you found this interesting, if this kind of piqued your curiosity, we recommend you go to the volatilitychallenge.com. I'll also put a link to this in the description. And we're doing this next week, uh, March 5th through the 8th. We're going to talk about all these concepts in depth, skew, volatility, term structure, how you can trade it, how you can estimate hedging flows. We're going to get into trade-specific examples. Uh, it's going to be a great event. We hope you can join us again. We'll put a link to this in the description. If you have any comments as well, please leave them and, we'll make, and we will be sure to get back to you. Thanks.